So I'm pleased to introduce uh, Ivan Di Liberti, who will talk about uh, uh, two words, higher topology. Please. Okay, so hello everyone. I hope you can hear me well. And yeah, to, now I'm, I'm going to talk to you about two words, higher topology. Um, so uh, this talk is a summary or a presentation of a paper, which was recently accepted by Journal of Pure Applied Algebra which has the same title of, of the talk, but it is also, I mean, it's, it's really not the full story. What I'm going to tell you, it's just a little part of the big picture. And the reason is quite simple. We don't have enough time to go through the whole story. Um, so uh, you find here a list of the other papers. And in particular, uh, one could say that there are uh, three parts of this story. There is a more geometric part, a more categorical part, and a more logical part. And today we will only discuss uh, the geometric side of the story. Uh, to be very honest with you, my uh, favorite part is the logical one. And this, was, this is where my motivation comes from. Uh, but the, there is no way to present only the logical one without telling the geometric part. And so for time reasons, I can only present the geometric one. And for, and for the logicians, I recommend to, to read the paper number three in the list. Uh, and the paper number four is just my PhD thesis. So essentially it puts everything together. Okay, I think we are ready to start. Uh, so what is this talk about? Uh, it's too early to tell, and we have to start from something simpler. And uh, let's start from general topology and, and plane geometry, which is something that I'm sure everybody understands. So in this diagram, you see three categories. And uh, top is the category of topological spaces and continuous maps. And post omega is the category of posets with directed suprema and functions preserving directed suprema. And loc is the category of locales. And, uh, and a local is just a frame. Um, so this is just the, the, the opposite category of frames. Uh, maybe I should tell you what's a frame or maybe not. Um, it really depends on your background, but let's recall it together. A frame is just a poset with infinitary joints and finite needs. And these two distribute with the infinitary distributivity rule. Uh, the canonical example of frame is the, the poset of open sets of a topological space. And I'm sure since all of you have attended the whole conference, <laughs> uh, I'm sure you are quite used to the notion of frame. So why am I telling the story of these three categories? Why do we care? Uh, the reason is that these three categories are different approaches to geometry. Well, there is not much to say about uh, topological spaces. I think we all agree that a topological space is a geometric uh, gadget or entity. A local is uh, the point-free approach or constructive approach to, to spaces. And posets with directed suprema are not precisely a geometric entity per se, but they were approached by Scott with a very geometric perspective, and they are very relevant in domain theory and lambda calculus. So essentially, these are three, three very interesting things in, in mathematics and a geometric study of mathematics. And these three approaches have been related in, in the past uh, in, in quite well-known ways that I will just recall. Uh, so uh, we have some factors that relate these categories. So one of these is the factor of points. And uh, as, you, as you see, there is an abuse of notation. Both these two factors are named points. And you will see in a moment the reason for this. So points takes a locale and it maps it to the set of formal points. And the formal point of a locale is a morphism from the truth value locale into L. 
And this sets a mix both a topology and a partial order in a quite natural way. So if you put the partial order, then you, you land in posets with directed suprema. And if you put the topology, then you land in topological spaces. Um, so S is a, is a little bit more tricky to discuss and it doesn't appear in the literature. Well, it kind of does, but it doesn't appear explicitly in the literature. And it takes a pose at P and it maps it to the, uh, to the home space into truth values. So zero and one, and one can check uh, uh, this is, I mean, you can find it in some works of Vickers, but it's, it's an exercise, it's not a super hard theorem, that this is always a local. And so this, this fields of lo a local out of any posit with directed suprema. And then ST, a P equips a posit with the Scott topology and people in domain theory and people in general topology are very much used to this notion. And essentially the Scott topology over P was defined in the previous, uh, in the, by the previous factor, because we can see that this, this set is a subset of the power set of P. And, uh, and so we can look at it as a family of open sets. Uh, and one can check that this define a topology. And this is precisely the Scott topology, which was defined by Scott in the, I think in the eighties or in the seventies while it was working on domain theory. Um, then I should tell you who is the functor O, uh, this is the only one missing. And O is just the functor that takes the open set of, of a topological space. So all these functors are quite well known, I would say, with the very exception of ST, sorry, of S. And so the first one is called by some people the Isbell adjunction, even though it was not shown by Isbell by, for the first time. I, I would say it was popularized by Isbell to the general audience. Um, then the second one has no name. Uh, because it doesn't appear explicitly in the literature. So let's call it the Scott adjunction. And another information is that the solid diagram commutes. So if I take the Scott topology and then I, I take its open sets, this is the same of taking directly the functor S. And this is more or less evident from the presentation I gave you of this functor S. And all this story is extremely classical. Uh, and so a good question is, okay, what did I do? What was my contribution to this? And what I did essentially was to categorify this. So I should tell you what means to categorify. And this is the project of categorification. So we have the same diagram, just all the nodes have, have changed. And then, I mean, essentially during the talk, I will describe you uh, all the two categories and all the factors involved in these constructions. And maybe I will also tell you why this is important from a logical point of view, just in a nutshell. So if, if we go back to this diagram here, we can see that the adjunction between topological spaces and locales, uh, I mean, logicians know that the adjunction between topological spaces and, and locales can be used to prove completeness for propositional logic. And this, this reconnects my talk with the talk of, of, of with the first talk of the afternoon. Uh, so, okay, this adjunction is important when you want to prove uh, uh, co uh, sorry, completeness like theory, theorems for propositional logic. So the adjunction between this adjunction that we will prove here will be important to discuss completeness theorems for geometric theories. And we will see that, uh, we will not see it, but if you read the papers, you can see that also the adjunction on the right is linked to completeness theorem. And in general, some people call them reconstruction theorems, theorems for, for theories, or you might just call them syntax semantics dualities. Okay. 
Uh, so in this picture, let me describe who are the main characters. So topoi is the two category of grotentic topoi, and a topos is a co-complete category with lex colimits. Uh, lex colimits is, is a way to phrase descent. And if you look at this definition, you see the analogy with locales. So topoi are just categorified locales in the sense that they are complete posets where limits and finite limits and colimits behave nicely. So this is the infinitary uh, distributivity rule, which then becomes the descent property of the topos. And then there is the generating set assumption, which can be seen just as a tameness assumption. Uh, it is very important from a logical point of view because it allows to cut the, 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 the internal logic uh, to just a set, which then can be, can, can be seen as the axioms. But it doesn't have a conceptual meaning. It is just important from the point of view of the presentation of the topos. And of course, the presentation of the topos is technically very important, but the, the whole internal logic does not depend on the fact that, that we have a generating set. And so I would say, in this sense, a topos is really the natural categorification of a poset because, again, it is a co-complete category together with a good interchange between co-limits and finite limits, which is precisely what a locale is. And ACC omega should be the analog of posets with directed co-limits, right? So in ACC omega, we find accessible categories with directed co-limits and factors preserving directed co-limits. So again, someone might raise his hand or her hand and say, look, but what is this accessibility assumption there? Well, it's like in the case of the generator of the topos, the point of an accessible, of, of an accessible category with, with directed co-limits is more the fact that we have directed co-limits then the accessibility assumption is important in order to have a decent generator, which is, use, which is useful when we want to do computations. But as a fact, the internal logic of the category that we care about is just to have directed co-limits. And we see that this is a natural categorification of the notion of posets with directed co-limits because it's essentially the same definition. And then I should tell you about this L LB ion. So this should, take, this should be the replacement for the notion of topological space. And in a sense, it's the most important uh, contribution of this talk. And this will be the notion of ENAD. Uh, so ENADs were introduced by Richard Gardner. And the idea of an ENAD uh, is the following. So what's a topological space? It's a set together with an interior operator or a closure operator, but we will focus on interior operators. So, and what's an interior operator? It's just, a, 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 if you think about it, it's just a co-monad on its power set, uh, which is idempotent, but this is trivial because every co-monad on, on a posit will be idempotent. And also it must preserve finite limits, which is the, 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 post, the fact that if I take, uh, if I take intersect, finite intersection of opens, this is still open. This is the property. So Gardner went very naively in a sense and just said, look, um, a enad on a set is a, a, a set X together with a co-monad over, uh, over its copreshift category, which preserve finite limits. Again, in the analogy between power sets and pre-shift categories, which category theorists are very used, this is the most naive categorification of the notion you can think about. And yet it's surprising how perfectly this notion works. And the first way that comes to my mind to convince you that this is a good notion is to look at this theorem by Garner. So, um, so in general, if you take the category 
sorry, if you take the co-algebras for an interior operator in a, in a space, this is precisely the category of open sets. And the reason is stupid because since the interior operator is idempotent, the, the co-algebras are precisely the fixed points and the fixed points for the interior operator are precisely open sets. So the co-algebras for the interior operator are, is precisely the locale of open sets. In the same way, if you take the co-algebra for the interior operator in an enad, you get in general a co-complete uh, a co-complete elementary topos. So it is lacking a generator, but it's very close to be a Grothendieck topos. And Gardner says that an enad is bounded if, when I take the when I take the uh, co-algebras. Uh, this has a generator, and so in particular, it's not just an elementary topos, but it is a Grothendieck topos. So if you forget for a moment about the size story, the size issues of this story, you get a natural factor from enads into topoi. And of course, this would be from enads into elementary topoi, but if you choose bounded enads, then you, you get Grothendieck topoi. And this is precisely the categorification of the factor which goes from topological spaces to locales and takes the open sets. And so the analogy is extremely tight. So essentially what I told you up to this point is that there are these three categories, topoi, ACC omega, and bion. And then there is this factor O, which was defined by Gardner. Also the factor PT in this diagram is known to the literature and people have essentially presented it during this conference because it's precisely the factor that takes points of a topos. And one can show, this is proven in many references in the literature, that the category of points of a topos is always accessible and has directed colimits. So we do land in accessible categories with directed colleagues. So essentially my contribution was to provide all the other factors, show that they are a junction and show properties of these factors. So let's start. How much time do I have? Aha, uh -huh. interesting. Okay, so the first one is the Scott adjunction, which was found in collaboration with Simone Ahri. Um, so this is the adjunction between accessible categories with direct colimits and topoi. And so I will not present again the categories. And I already defined you the factor PT. So I should tell you who is the factor S. So S is defined by taking accessible factors preserving direct colimits from A to set. Now, if you remember the construction of S in the Posetal case, it was defined by taking factors preserving directed colimits into truth values. So as always, we replace truth values with the category of sets and the construction remains the same. And one can show, this is not trivial now, uh, I mean, it's, it's not a trivial verification that this category is always a topos. And the reason is that you can check all the Giro axioms on the spot because, uh, because essentially since directed colimits commute with finite limits, uh, things will work very well. I mean, I cannot say more than this, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, but you can show that this is always a topos. And how does it work with morphism? Well, you take a factor preserving directed colimits and the, the, the F upper star clearly maps a factor preserving directed colimits in a factor preserving directed colimits. And then you can show that this is co-continuous and it preserves finite limits because of, of the structure of the category. And so this will induce a geometric morphism in the same direction because remember, geometric morphism go in the direction of the right adjoint, and this is gonna be the left adjoint. Okay, so this is the Scott construction. Now let's move to the 
to the right adjoint to O. Now, if you look at Garner definition, you really cannot provide a right adjoint for O. The definition of Gardner is not the right one in order to, to finish the proof. So we had to introduce a generalized notion of ENAT, which I'm going to present now. It will look scary at first sight. Just bear with me for a second. What's a generalized ENAT? So a generalized ENAT is a category, a locally small category, which is prefinitely co-complete, equipped with a lex commonad over this category. So I should say many things, but maybe let's start from a question. Okay, I need to generalize ENAD, and it makes sense that I want to put a locally small category instead of a set. But why isn't a ENAD just the data of a lex commonad over set to the X? And the answer to this question is very delicate. And so in order to give this answer, I first make precise my definition. So this guy is a full subcategory of set to the X, which is made of, of small copper sheets, namely those functors that are small co-limits of co-representables. This category is locally small as opposed to, to set to the X, which might be locally large, and it's not a category that I like. Of course, if X is small, then every pre-shift is small, so we are closer to Gardner definition when everything is small. And remember, Gardner was, was using just a set, so of course a set is small. And then, P of X has a universal property, and it is the free completion of X of under co-limits. And in general, P of X is a little bit pathological. You cannot prove uh, many things about it. And so this additional assumption of being prefinitely co-complete is needed in order to speak about lex commonas. And the point is that in general, this category will not have finite limits. So I need to put an assumption in such a way that this category has finite limits to talk about lex commonads. I could speak about uh, flat commonads, but this would be a, a technical disaster. So I preferred to use this notion. And I will not tell you what means to be prefinitely co-complete. I will just give you two, uh, uh, one, sorry, two sufficient conditions. If X is small or accessible, then P of X is complete. So in particular, if X is small or accessible, it is finitely pre-co-complete. And so P of X has finite limits. In fact, it has all limits. And so I can make sense of a Lex commonad. So all in all, what I, what I will say all the time is that a ENAD will be an accessible category X together with an interior operator over its category of small copper sheaves, which is Lex. And this is the most general, sorry, the most natural generalization of Gardner definition, given the fact that we have to take into account size issues. So why do I care about size issues? And the reason is that when I have this proposition, the point is that when G is a, a decent category, so here I chose total, but you can choose any reasonable assumption. And P of X is my small pre-sheet, then any co-continuous factor has a right adjoint. This is not true if P of X is locally large. And so I need a category which is locally small in order to apply any version of the joint factor theorem. So here size issues are extremely important in order to make anything works. And why do I care about this result? Well, the reason is very simple. The reason is that I want to induce naturally more commonal over this. And when I have such a thing, then I can take the composition and this induces a commonal over P of X. 
Now, I have very little time, so I will, I will close it up very, very quickly. Maybe one thing I would like to say is that accessible ultra categories a la Mackay admit a natural structure of ENAT. So this means that we have that ENATs are not just geometric objects, but they really are categories of models equipped with a special logical glue that puts everything together and keeps track of the logical structure of the category of models. And so for me, higher topology is really the, the correct place in which to study formal model theory. So AENA is formally a category of models of a theory. Okay, so I presented you uh, the factor O, and now I should introduce you the factor PT, which is the right adjoint. No, sorry, I introduced you the factor. Sorry, I haven't, sorry, I should introduce you the factor PT, which is the right adjoint for O. Now, unfortunately, I see that there really is no time. So if someone will ask me, I prepared the slide. Um, so I will go directly to the results. So what I showed is that, so what I showed is that we have a two adjunction between bounded enats and topoi. And the most nice result, I would say unexpected one is that this adjunction is idempotent, inducing an equivalence of, of two categories between topoi with enough points and sober enats. Now, of course, the notion of topos with enough points was in the literature since forever. But this making the analogy with, with, sorry, with locales with enough points and sober spaces was not in the literature at all. And so this totally mm, makes sense of the original notion of topos with enough points because you really get the usual um, is the uh, duality between topoi, uh, sorry, between locales and, and spaces. Oh, sorry. And uh, this is the, the end of the talk. So there are many open questions. For example, uh, uh, general topology is completely missing for ENADs. For example, the notion of closed set is, is definitely missing. So what is a closed set for, for an ENAD? Honestly, I don't know. And this, this would be important to characterize sober enums because we don't have the same characterization we have for sober spaces. So in general, it would be nice to develop general topology for enums because then it has logical implication on the category of models. And now I will stop. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ivan.